and educational library. Isn't this beautiful? Hi, I'm Todd Tongan. You know, I consider myself lucky to live here in the state of Florida. We share the environment with such a wide variety of animals. Frankly, I think it's what makes this place so special. But as we continue to develop new areas around the state, we need to keep one thing in mind. We might be building where somebody else already lives. You know, each year, thousands of animals are injured. The major cause, us. Sometimes it's carelessness, other times it's just because we're here. This program is the first in a series the Folk Peterson Foundation is creating to help us learn how to coexist peacefully and responsibly with the animals in our environment. There are many people, most of them volunteers, who spend a great deal of their time rescuing and rehabilitating animals, and we're gonna meet some of them. As a matter of fact, this is Alan Shaco. Alan is a humane trapper and a wildlife rehabilitator. That's a pretty fancy title. Yes, it is. <laughs> what does it all mean, though? Well, as a rehabilitator, we try to educate the general public and teach them how to live responsible with the animals. We generally follow the four R's, which is rescue, mm -hmm. raising, rehabilitate, and release into its own natural environment whenever possible. And as a humane trapper, which I consider myself, we try to teach the people how to coexist with these animals that might show up in their backyard. Relocation is done only as a last resort. Hmm. And this is difficult for the animal because food, water sources are extremely hard to find and then sometimes it results in their death. Well, Todd, I think it's extremely important for the average citizen to understand how to live responsibly with our wildlife, when to help them, when to leave them alone, and helping them avoid injuries. People don't understand with development as we have here, what's gonna happen to the animals. I don't know what will happen to these animals. Well, they're gonna end up in somebody's backyard that's not gonna know what to do. But armed with the simplest of basics, which I'm gonna show you today, okay. each person will be a tremendous help in fighting to save our wildlife. So, Todd, for instance, what would you do if you found a bird with a broken wing or a raccoon that was hitting the road? Uh, I guess I'd call my vet or maybe animal control. Well, in different counties, animal control basically deals with cats and dogs, and a lot of vets aren't experienced with wildlife. The most important thing I can express to you today, whether the animal is a nuisance animal or an injured animal, is to call the Freshwater Fish and Game Commission or your local wildlife center if you have one and learn who your rehabbers are. The Game and Freshwater Fish Commission is charged with the preservation and wise utilization of wildlife within the state of Florida. Routinely, our offices receive phone calls reference nuisance and injured wildlife. These calls can be handled in several different ways. The majority of the time, the caller is advised that he can handle the situation himself. Secondly, if there is a danger to the animal, a wildlife care center or a nuisance animal trapper can be contacted in that area. And thirdly, if there's a danger to public health or safety or property, then a wildlife officer can't be dispatched to take care of the situation. Todd, this is what I have in my car. A carrier, a trapping cage, some nets, some first aid equipment. <laughs> what are these? Well, they're either for like an owl or a hawk, for instance. Well, this is great, Alan, but I mean, I can't carry all this stuff in my trunk. But you could carry a box that you could flatten, a towel, yeah. a broom to push the animal off the road. That should help you in most situations. All right, well, what if I run across like a snake or a possum or something? Well, your safety always comes first. And if you feel unsure about it, call Fish and Game. Excuse me. Huh? Hey, looks like we're going to get our Wild first rescue call here. Chance to save some lives. Yes, we'll be there right away. 
What do we got, Alan? A pelican that needs our help. All right. Let's go. problem is. You put the towel down that you had in your car from before. No, this bird is all caught up on this cage. Oh, let's see. It looks like it's got monofilament. Here, you take these. It's okay. like kind of free. What you want to do is get from behind so he doesn't swim free and get way far from so us. So get around him? Yeah, so trying to keep from the back. Okay. And I'm going to grab his beak. You see the little hook on the end oh, of his yeah, beak? He is caught up. Yeah, that can... Him a little here. We'll pull him close. Is he okay? Yes, he's fine. We'll just get the monofilament off him. Here, you can hold his beak. Okay. All tangled up. Can you cut him free? You yeah, can. here you we can are. hold him from on the side here. Now, can someone do this by themselves? Yes, they can. These birds are pretty docile. Okay, you, you got that cut loose? You got this? Yeah, you might want to hold on to this. Thank you so much for being yeah, involved. Thanks a lot. Really. For up. So, what happens to the bird now? Well, we're going to take him to a local rehabber. Again. He's a little nervous. Well, we'll put the towel. That's why we got the towel. Put okay. it over his head, and that'll make him less stressed. We'll keep him calm down until we get him to the van. Oh, there. Make He's sure you want to take all the monofilament with you so another one doesn't get tangled up. Okay. Let's go. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I wasn't as tough as I thought it would be. No, you did great. You're becoming a professional at this. Well, I don't know about that. All right, now now what do we do? Well, I'm going to take the beak from you, and I want you to back him into the carrier. Yeah, okay, back him in? Yes, back him in. All right. Keep his wings Keep down. Keep his wings tucked in. Right, we're going to put him in. Now, you've got a kennel, but what? I have only a box. Right, so this is where that box in your trunk, if it's not deep enough, you can put the towel over it, or you have another person with you, you can carry it in your lap. And that towel will keep him settled down? Right. Should I put like a rubber band or something on his beak so no, he doesn't? No, nothing. No tape, no nothing. Just leave it as is and put your finger in between the beak and hold it. Now, will he stay real quiet here? Yes, as long as you don't have the radio on or no smoking or the air conditioner very cold. And you, this is not a time for your children or whoever around is to pet the bird. Okay. He's stressed out. He's possibly injured. Just keep him calm. Nice and calm and quiet. Now, where do we go? Now we go to Cindy. The bird goddess. The bird goddess? Yes. Oh, okay. This guy is covered with monofilament line. He was snagged on a fish trap. Yeah. Do you see a lot of birds come in with the, this type of injury? Absolutely. Lots of monofilament, lots of other things that cause them great distress. Another biggie is those darn six-pack holders that yeah. you see on soda. The plastic rings. Plastic rings. Pollution. Uh, pollution. People's garbage. Yeah. What about this? What'd you, what this was uh, on a bird that I got last week. It was stuck on his beak. You can see where his beak So any netting or dive bags? Exactly. Plastic bags. Now what are you, what are you looking for now? I'm looking now for other hooks and monofilament line that might be in there. We don't want to miss any because uh, they get infected. Can you feel if he's got a broken bone too? Pretty much. Right now we're just going to, he's kind of stressy. We're going to give him some fluids like a sports drink or something like that to make him feel better. And if you'll hang on there tight. Okay. We'll give him I'm some. Can push it down for you? No, if you just hold him up a little more, I can get it. And we'll get him a little R&R. &R. So he can't go, you're not going to release him right no. away? No, because we don't know how long he's been sitting oh, out I there, see. and we want to make sure he feels good when it's well, time. Me take would, him? You, would you like to carry him back? Well, I'm kind of close to him now. <laughs> you got a good hold on him. Yep, I okay? got him. Okay. Straight back. Come on, buddy. There you go, buddy. All Oop. right. We'll make some friends. What a great place for a pelican to hang out and get better. Absolutely, and unfortunately, they're all injured. Really? Yeah. What can we do to help them out? Well, a lot of things. Uh, don't throw anything away if you're out on a boat. No monofilament, no garbage, nothing like that. Uh, we mentioned before the six-pack holders. Cut them up. Yeah. Throw them away. Pollution. What? Pollution. Pollution plays right. a big part right. in this. Don't rinse out your bilge in your boats. What about the little birds like I find in my backyard? Do you do something for them? Absolutely, absolutely. You can plant fruit trees. You can uh, plant hedges where they can nest. You can double belly your cat's collar. Right? So that he Try hears them coming. Try to keep them in as much yeah. as you can. Uh, don't trim your trees. 
between March and August. That's when they're nesting. I see. And the songbirds have a big problem with plate glass windows. Uh, you can buy streamers or you can buy a cutout of a hawk to put on them. Oh, so he doesn't if fly into it. If you do, reflection. find one. And you will generally find them at the bottom of the window. Yeah. Very carefully pick them up and put them in a box with holes and keep it dark because they go into shock very easy. And take them to your closest rehabber. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Good. Thanks, Cynthia. You're welcome. One of the biggest problems we have during the summer months is what we call kidnap baby birds. Uh, nesting season is between March and September, and a lot of times people will see a baby bird on the ground, such as this one, and because it's on the ground, they think that it's in danger. If they see that it's fully feathered like this one and running around and not in immediate danger, or having any obvious injuries, then we just leave it alone. It's getting ready to learn how to fly. The parents are nearby and they will take care of their baby. If it's something like this, which isn't fully feathered and not ready to be out of its nest, we can pick it up and put it right back up in its nest. It's not true that if you touch a baby bird that the parents will reject it. They don't abandon their young that easily. If you can't get it back in the nest, you can make it an imitation nest out of something like this or a straw hat or anything porous and you line it with grass and twigs, dry grass, dry twigs, leaves, put it securely back in the tree. Uh, if it's injured, if there's any apparent injuries or if it's in immediate danger, call your fish and game or your wildlife care center. Before you do that, you want to put it in a box with air holes and keep it warm, quiet and dark. You know, that was, that was pretty neat, rescuing that pelican. I feel I feel a lot more comfortable with birds, and I think I learned a lot from Cynthia. Well, you did really great, but not all birds are that easy. No? No, there's birds of prey. Birds of prey? Yeah. That sounds a little scary. Well, they can be dangerous, so let me take you to a rehabber that works with these birds, and we'll learn how to handle them. Okay. Zefferlin. He's worked Hi, with sir. animals his whole life and birds of prey for approximately how long? 15 years now, Alan. Well, now, he's a pretty cool looking bird. What kind of, what kind of animal is he? This is a red-tailed hawk, Todd. And can I touch him? No, unfortunately, you can't. Uh, all birds of prey, which uh, red tail is one of them, uh, are protected by federal law. They're protected from either being touched or any sort of harassment. Well, he's a beautiful bird, but I, I see he looks like he's got a bum wing or something. Yes. What happened to him? He was hit by a car. I see. Well, you know, we just got done rescuing a seabird, and I kind of think of myself as a pelican paramedic. <laughs> yes, he uh, is. Is it the same drill th to save this bird, then? No, unfortunately, it isn't. Uh, it's not quite that easy. These birds can be extremely dangerous. They have powerful feet and talons, as well as a sharp beak. And if you do come across one, what you really need to do is to call for help. Call either fishing game, wildlife center, someone that knows what they're doing to handle these birds. What if you found like a little baby? Well, if you did find a little baby or a small screech owl or kestrel, those you could handle by taking a towel or a heavy cloth, picking them up, putting them in a box, and then put them in a quiet, dark place before you call. This is where those basics I told you to keep in your car yeah, come in handy. the blanket in the box. Yes, yeah. and yeah, get them if, out of the road, secure their safety. Exactly. If you find one along the road, uh, the best thing to do is just to push them off the side of the road, get them to safety, and then call for help. But if you were to come across an adult bird like this, a couple things you can do to help the bird. You can protect them from the elements and other predators. And you can do that by putting a vented box over them or a lightweight blanket or sheet, but making darn sure that they have room to breathe under there. Right. And what can we do to get along with these animals a little bit better? Well, the biggest thing we can do is to respect them and to try and understand them through education and work to coexist with them here in the state of Florida. Alan, I couldn't believe it. The songbirds, the pelicans, and the birds of prey were really neat. I can't believe there's that many different kinds of birds in Florida. Yes, and that's not all. There's a lot of other species that need our help too, Todd. Yeah? Yes, and I just got a typical call, and you're gonna enjoy this. Let's go. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I have a possum in my garbage can who's in the tree, and all his 
in there. Yes, you do. This is the only North American marsupial we have. Just like the kangaroo, it carries its baby in its pouch. Like Can you this. take it away anyway? I mean, I really don't want him around. Well, I suggest you keep him because while you're sleeping, he's running the perimeter of your house eating rodents and mice and rats, which reproduce every six weeks. And I have a dog, though, and a cat. That's all the more reason, because otherwise you'd have to use poison, and you don't want to do that. No, I definitely don't want to use no. poison. No, so I suggest that you would keep him and let him do his job at night. But can he stay? I mean, what's, I'm pregnant. I and assure I'm you that rabies. this, no, this animal will do more good than harm, and he doesn't carry rabies. Come on. Are you sure? I mean, positive. Let him stay. And I suggest we turn the can over on its side, and tonight he'll come out because he's a nocturnal animal. We can just leave a little water in case he's dehydrated and let him do his job. Are you sure you'll be okay? Positive. Okay, then. And I can Fine. see, do you have problems with raccoons also? As a matter of fact, yes, I do have a lot of raccoons. They're all over the place. They're running on top of my roof. With a few simple tips, I think you could animal proof your house. Can you help me with that? Sure we can. It's easy to wildlife proof your yard. One, trim your trees away from your house so you don't have roof access. Two, don't feed your pets outside. And if you do, bring the food in at night. Most of the animals are nocturnal. Three, keep lights on the yard at night. And four, secure your garbage cans with bungee cords. Alan, I thought that was terrific, the way you talked that woman into letting the possum stay in her Thanks, backyard. Man. But what if he would have been injured? Well, that's why I brought you to meet Sharin. She works with mammals. Hi, Sharin. Hi. <laughs> she sure does. She got her hands full. I guess it's feeding time, huh? Sharin, I'm on a quest to find out as much knowledge about wildlife as I can, and maybe you can help me with rescuing mammals. Well, first, you don't want to do it yourself because they become very aggressive when they've been injured. And our most common injuries are hit by car, or caught by a dog. And when you come across one that's been hit by a car, what you want to do is get him off the side of the road with a stick, something you might have in your you car. You don't want to touch him? Don't want to touch him. He's aggressive. Okay. Um, second is you want to cover him with a container with ventilation, a cardboard box with holes. Prevents further injury. And then call your wildlife center or a local rehabber. Okay. What if about babies? I mean, I can handle a baby. They have to be easier, right? <laughs> <laughs> babies are easier, but there you have to determine whether they're injured or not. Um, sometimes they're just orphaned for a couple of hours, oh. and moms will come back for their babies. Uh, mm -hmm. Squirrels take about an hour and a half. Raccoons can take up to 24 hours to come back wow. for their young, and possums won't come back. All right, once I've determined it's injured or it's, the mom's definitely not coming back, then what do I do? Okay, then uh, the easiest thing to do is take a towel to pick up the little one. It's safer for you, safer for him. And then put him in a ventilated box again, a cat carrier. Um, you want to keep their body temperature up though, so you want to, on a heating pad on low. Okay. Or even a Ziploc bag with warm water in it wrapped in a towel will do. And then call... Call your local wildlife center or local rehabber. I can't keep the little guy and no. raise him myself? <laughs> no? As cute as they are, they're wildlife and it's better if they're put back out in the wild so somebody, a rehabber, will raise them and release them back out in the wild where future generations can see them just like you're seeing them. Todd, you've really met a lot of interesting people here today. No kidding. But there's one more person I want you to meet. I don't know if I like the sounds of that, Al. Who is this guy? Huh? Come on. Uh, Cough it up. Surprise. Now, I know what this guy is. That's an American alligator. Since I moved to Florida, I've seen a bunch of these. Yeah, here in the state of Florida, we have the largest population of American alligators. We have well over a million of them. So what that means is that you're going to find these in almost any body of water here in the state of Florida. But now, what could he be scared of? I mean, he doesn't have any enemies, does he? Well, his biggest enemy is going to be man. Um, there are a couple of points, though, where they can become aggressive and attack you, and one's going to be when they're protecting their nest and young, mm -hmm. and the second point's going to be is when you hand feed them. You shouldn't do that? No. Here in the state of Florida, it is against the law to feed wild alligators. I had a friend who found one in his backyard in the pool. Uh, what if they really become a nuisance? Well, if, if it is actually a nuisance alligator, the best thing to do would call your local fishing game and they'll send somebody out to remove it. And relocate but, them? Well, no, they won't relocate. They will destroy the alligator. So you need to make sure that it is a nuisance alligator. Ah, did you get all that? Don't you be a nuisance.
You know that old joke, uh, why did the chicken cross the road? How does the turtle cross the road? Very slowly. Ah, so sometimes it needs some help. Sure. Um, if you ever happen to see a turtle in the road, what you want to do is you want to try to grab the turtle towards his side. You never mm -hmm. want to get towards his head and then always move him towards the direction he was crawling. And you never want to try to pick up a turtle like this over here. <laughs> no, <laughs> you could ride that turtle across oh, the yes. road. Now, uh, what if he's already been hit? Well, if he does have a cracked shell, the best thing to do is to try to wrap him in a wet towel to try to keep him moist. And you, and you want to put him like in a cardboard box and keep it well ventilated. And you just want to call up your local fish and game and they'll inform you who's the local rehab center in your local area. Shouldn't I put him in a kiddie pool or something like that? Oh, no, you never want to put a turtle straight in water. Um, so there are some turtles, like the one you have here is actually a gopher tortoise. He's actually a land animal, where this oh. one is a water turtle. I see. And if they've already had a cracked shell, they can be fixed? Oh, sure they can. Um, their shell is actually part of their bone, so they can mend just like, like a bone. They'll usually put like a fiberglass patch and they've even come up with a certain glue that actually glue the shell back together. <laughs> All right. Well, what kind of snake is this? Oh, this is the indigo snake. Is he a poisonous snake? Oh, no, he sure isn't. Would you like to hold him? <laughs> Does he bite? No, no, he won't bite you, I promise. Okay. We'll turn him right around your neck. Okay. Alan, you want to? No, that's your neck. You sure? <laughs> yes, it's your neck. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I found a snake a couple of days ago in my backyard. My wife wanted me to kill the snake. I, didn't, I really didn't know what to do. Well, you should never kill a snake. Here in the state of Florida, we only have six types of poisonous snakes. Your chances would become very slim running across one of them. Okay, well, what if I did find a poisonous well, snake? Well, if you did, the best thing to do is just call your local fish and game, and they will send somebody out to remove the snake yeah. from your yard. Well, what good are snakes, though? Well, snakes are very beneficial. They control a lot of our rodent problems, and if it wasn't for snakes, they'd probably be replaced by some type of a poisonous pesticide. Ah, so these guys are little mouse traps. Oh, yes, and this particular <laughs> snake here are actually eat poisonous snakes also. Ah, so we really like him. Yeah, he's a good snake. It has become increasingly popular for the general public to keep exotic reptiles as pets. My advice to the public before they purchase an exotic reptile is to obtain as much knowledge as they can about the pet that they're going to choose. The first and foremost thing is to learn about the animal's requirements for care. It is very important to know how to care for that animal. Second thing is to know how big is that pet going to get? Your 18 inch python will grow up to be 18 feet. There's going to be uh, an expensive diet uh, required for an animal such as that. You start off, let's say, with your python feeding it mice and 18 feet, you're looking at a 10 pound rabbit. So cost is an issue there as well. Habitat. Habitat is very important. You may start off with a monitor in a 10 gallon aquarium, but when he reaches five feet, he's going to need a better enclosure. Also, if you've got a reptile that is getting bigger, a lot of times they're going to get more aggressive. Now, you're faced with an animal that is big and aggressive and costly. What are you going to do with it if you cannot afford to keep him uh, in the proper manner in which he should be kept? You cannot release it into the wild. It is against the law here in Florida to release an exotic reptile into the wild. One, it's not good for the animal. Two, it could be a public danger. But three, it will upset the balance of our native species here in Florida. So it's a danger to the environment as well. Alan, thanks so much for spending the day with me. I think I really learned a lot, first of all, to respect animals. Also, you know, they've been here a lot longer than we have, so we need to learn how to coexist with them. Right you are. You know, this weekend I'm gonna get my little rescue kit together. Good. I gotta get the box. Of course, I'm gonna need a broom. My towel. Right. I think I'm gonna double bell my cat. Good know? idea. It wouldn't hurt to bungee the garbage cans either. I could throw away the fishing line that's sitting around and been around for a while. You know, I might go ahead and put those streamers on the Thanks for spending too. the day I with us. I hope you've learned something that'll help save the wildlife in your out. area. Hey, that's my line. Todd, you're busy. That's right. You know, some fruit trees are nice. I need something to eat. I